such things as, look what you've done to me. Uh, 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 what are you doing over there sleeping while I'm having this baby, your child? Your child. But at the end of the expectation, there's a bundle of joy. The anticipation. Oh, your baby is sitting hot in the belly. It's a boy. Are oh, you carrying that baby go? It's a girl. But the expectation at the end of the day, a little woo woo, gaga, coochie coochie coo, feels there. Expectation. The word for the day is expectation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, if I were to use a secular meaning of what that word means, using Webster's, or the online dictionary.com, it will say at the now a strong belief that something will happen or be in case in the future. It is a belief that someone will or should achieve something. Amen. No better watch me. No better follow me. Amen. It's the act or state of expecting or looking forward to an event that is about to happen. Okay. That which is expected or looked for. The prospect of the future grounds upon which something excellent is expected to happen. So the prospect of anything good to come uh -huh. or bad, uh -oh. such as such as property or rent, the value of any change, which depends on some contingent event. I'm talking about expectations. Okay. okay. Some some synonyms or similar words might be used such as expectancy, expectance, hope, anticipation, or prospect. Now the Bible has a lot to say about expectation. Jeremiah 20 and 29 and 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, the thoughts of peace, and I don't need you to give you an expected end. Proverbs 23 and 18 says, For surely there is an end, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Proverbs 24 and 14 says, So the knowledge of wisdom unto thy soul, when thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Okay. Proverbs 10 and 28. The hope of the righteousness, or hope of the righteous gladness, but the expectation of the wicked shall perish. Proverbs 62 and 5. My soul wait only upon God, my expectation is from him. Right. And the Apostle Paul said in Philippians 1 and 20, according to my earnest expectation and my hope that in nothing shall I be ashamed that in all boldness and always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be my, by life or by death. Wow. Amen. Yeah. In some instances, the New Testament suggests the idea of expectation as reaching out for something in readiness waiting to receive something. Yes, sir. Y'all didn't catch that. Amen. Okay. It means, it suggests the idea of reaching out in readiness to receive something. Amen. That's how the New Testament looks at that. Amen. We're in the book of Galatians, written by the Apostle Paul. When, when this epistle was written, varies between which of two common theories you ascribe to. The North Galatia theory and the South Galatia theory. Under the North Galatia theory, the term Galatian, Paul may have used to refer to those descendants of the Gauls, or the Gauls people. This means, this means the apostle may have visited the Galatian church between the second and third missionary journey. It was written from probably Ephesus of Corinth, if you subscribe to that theory, during his last missionary journey. If you would take the South Galatia theory, then it would refer to a, a Roman Congress of Galatia that was established in 25 BC. In this reasonable, in this consideration, a reasonable writing date will be 55 or 56 annual dominion. This book is considered Paul's fighting epistle. Amen? Amen. It is a book where uh, Paul has established some biblical truths already. And for some reason, you had these what's called Judaizers from the north coming down to try to proclaim or push off another type of gospel. 
Amen. Apostle Paul had to say, wait a minute, hold up. Amen. Amen. I, I, he had to establish his own pedigree. He had to say, hey, I am an Apostle Paul. Yeah. I am an Apostle. I might not be with the original 12, amen, but I am an exception to the rule. Amen. God gave me a special revelation. Amen, somebody. So I have authority. Amen. So, so how, how is it so, so easily and so early you are able to depart from the words of the truth? That I take, that I told you, amen? Yeah. And couched in these ten verses are two practical exhortations. Verses five, one through five talks about burning one another's burdens. Okay. I'm reading in context of these verses. Start in verse one when Apostle Paul suggests a hypothetical situation that reveals the true character of a spiritually mature believer. Y'all looking at me crazy, amen? I'm going to have to tell a little bit further. He lays the stand of what happens when one believer unexpectedly learns that another believer is trapped in some sin. Uh, Are you with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then the question about what should you do if you unexpectedly learn that some believer is trapped in some sin? Does love mean that we should overlook the sin and refuse to face the facts of that sinful situation? Or shall we expose the sin openly and gain repetition for superior holiness. Well, for Paul, a spirit-led person does need He gave a blueprint to describe the proper course of action. If you really watch verse 1, he says, first Paul says, Christians should restore the person who has fallen in the sin. Okay, okay. The word used here is to restore uh, as a medical term for sitting a fractured Boom. Can I stop, stop here parenthetically and say, here's a principle, Professor. What's wrong in Christian's life must be set straight. It must not be neglected or exposed openly. Amen? Secondly, the restoration must be done by those people who are spiritual. Amen? You can't have the hated person. You can't have the evil mean person. You have to have a person that's spiritual. Restoring in every Christian is exactly the kind of thing that spiritual Christians do. Thirdly, the restoration should be made gently, being aware by, that no one is immune to temptation. That means, that means instead of saying everything, everything, it's everyone, everyone, amen? Everyone can fall. Such an attitude avoids unkind gossip. It gets serious backsliding and promotes the good of the church and it glorifies the name of Jesus. Yes, sir. 